Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing Superbike 22. We're using Tommy Sykes here on board the BMW M1000 RR right here in Donington Park. Now I want to give a big massive shout out to Sergio23 for making uh, Tommy Sykes' helmet and Tom Sykes his number. I really, really appreciate that and desperate to play as Tom Sykes in Superbike and have been for many, many years. So I'm great to finally have him. He did a great job with the helmet and I'm very impressed. So. In today's video, I'm going to be trying to replicate somewhat of his performance in Donington Park last year, where he did manage to finish on the podium. I do know it's going to be a tough one, because I find Donington Park to be quite difficult in Superbike 22. And with the BMW, I'm not quite there yet with the feeling, but I'm certainly going to give it my best shot. Now, starting in second place, of course, was where Tommy Sykes started in last year's race. So to give it a chance here in race two, I do hope we can replicate it. And I tell you what, it does look really good. It, it does look like Tom Sykes. Of course, you've got the name in the top left-hand corner of the screen. You've got his number and, of course, his helmet and um, Dainese leathers, which he wears anyway. So I'm pretty happy with this. I felt the same way with using Ryan Vickers. And, of course, you guys have given suggestions of other riders you would like to see as wildcard in Superbike or bring back as Jonathan Ray has a little bit of a munge up on the inside. Now, Jonathan Ray didn't finish race two of um, World Superbike Donington Park round in 2021 last year. I think he crashed. I do believe it was Top Rack who won from Garrett Gerloff and Tom Sykes in third place. So we need to be fighting back against Jonathan sooner rather later, which we do have the better of him going into Redgate, but I don't know what the yeah, he's still there. The man on board, the Kawasaki, is still hanging in there, and he goes up on the inside. The ZX10R a little bit quicker and more nimble than the BMW M1000 RR, and I cannot compete with Jonathan Ray's pace right now. Now, last season, I do know for a fact, it was Scott Redding who was desperately trying to chase down Tom Sykes and thwart his podium attempts, and it's kind of happening here. Instead, Scott Redding on the BMW as well, rather than the factory Ducati. Now, to the right-hand side, into McLean's we go for the second time of asking. We are doing a nine-lap race here in Donington, and the thing I'm struggling with the most in Superbike 22 is the consistency of the faster laps towards the end of the Grand Prix. Of course, tyre life is sort of certainly uh, a big downfall of mine. I don't think I was playing this on 120% difficulty. I think I just recorded this one as a quick video before I made the jump over to 120%. So yeah, it's probably not going to be my best riding. It's probably not going to be my best commentary today either. I've got a bit of a cold coming. I can feel my nose uh, filling up, so my apologies if it does sound a little bit nasally. But Scott Redding there on the right-hand side, the man from Gloucester is coming, and I'm a little bit concerned that it's going to be too much for me to contend with. The M1000's doing battle here into Goddard for turning 11. We do still have the best of Reading for now. But across the line, Batista, uh, Bautista rather, is the fastest man on track with a 125.853. And yeah, we're, we are not there. <laughs> we're 1.4 seconds slower. Maybe a little bit more, actually. 1.6 behind the 37-year-old Spaniard, who is just on another level in this game. I know Milestone said that the riders would act as if they would in real life. So the, the speed, the competitiveness, the braking, etc. It's more or less accurate, but I'm constantly finding that Top Rack is always so far down in the list. He's either here in fourth, or usually even lower. Especially in my career mode for Aragon, if you watch that one, he was absolutely nowhere to be seen. Tenth and beyond, so I don't know what happened there, and I don't think that is completely accurate of Top Rack Razgatioglu's full potential. So bringing on the power now down the straight as we go into the Fogarty S's for the third time of asking into the left-hand side, then quickly change of direction, much better than the previous lap. We did make a bit of a hash on it last time around. Looking at Alex Lowe's chasing Scott Redding there as well, that's uh, very, very reminiscing of uh, Donning's apart this year, as a matter of fact. But we have gone deep into the Melbourne hairpin, but with power selling three, we might have the cutback. We're going to have to really try it here on top rack. But I just don't think I've got it. It's going to be really, really difficult as we now go into Goddard's, coming out of the corner, power setting three engaged, slipstream enabled. How are we going to get through? I don't think we are. It's going to be, oh my goodness. The problem I have now is just that Top Rack is going to be extremely quick into the change of direction going into the Craner Curves, and that is where I lose a little bit of confidence and we're changing the direction of the bike. I just can't seem to get this braking part right. It's never ever been a problem for me. The old hairpin is usually a corner that I usually tackle with such glee and confidence, but in Superbike 22 it's it's catching me off guard. 
and I'm really, really surprised to say that Donington Park in this one is not going to be my forte, and that's a real surprise for me, because I adore Donington Park and have always gone well here, but not feeling particularly confident right now, although we are still in range of getting a bit of slipstream from top rack, so maybe this is not all all so bad. And I tell you what, a good bit of slipstream there and a little bit of difficulty balancing there as we now go to the left hand side for the foggy S's again. Change the direction, we are right on the t tail actually of top right. This is excellent. But we've got to be strong into the Melbourne hairpin. Not too strong so we end up bumping into top rack or taking over at the front. We are still ended up bumping into him. But I'll retake the position if I can. Excuse me, top rack Razgatioglu. No thank you. I want to get on through. Tom Sykes back into the podium positions, but we have run it deep into Goddard's once again, losing that confidence. Look how hot the front brake is. My goodness, the front brake went scalding hot. Probably could have done with changing the brakes there as we go into the 125s for the very first time, just a tenth of a second slower than Jonathan Ray ahead. Maybe it's coming to us. Maybe now it's actually feeling more natural. We're getting there, hopefully. Let's fingers crossed then for the rest of this Grand Prix, but there's Top Rank up on the inside for the Craner Curves. You don't often see a move there, but you do see it when you're fighting the AI in Superbike 22. Now to the left-hand side from Starkey's Bridge, going into the left-hander of Schwantz, and then into the right-hander once more of McLean's. As we close in, a little bit late on the brakes there, that has compromised our exit, and then going up into Coppice, we lost a big chunk of time there. Four tenths of a second we've lost on this time and this particular lap alone. That's not going to cut it and we, we've got to stay with Top Rack here. We have to stay with him, otherwise forget it. So firm on the brakes, we'll go to the left hand side. Come on Tommy, got to get it done here as we... Oh, 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 slipping and sliding on the rear tyre, I think that's done it. Five tenths of a second behind, I think that might be curtains for us now. Well. Okay, we can fight for fourth place then, I guess. <laughs> it's still not the end of the world. It doesn't really, really matter if we get on the podium or not. I'm just so pleased to be using Tom Sykes in Superbike 22. And of course, if you do want to download the helmet or his number, you can do that by going into the online content section on PC on Superbike 22 and searching for Sykes. So now on lap six of nine, five seconds behind from Alvaro Bautista in the lead with a 125.6. 1-9. Our lap times aren't very consistent. Well, somewhat consistently slow. I'm still learning the gears and getting better at the game, but no excuses. We're still we're still going to get there. We will get to the highest level. I mean, I think I felt the same way on MotoGP 21. MotoGP 22 I felt very competitive with from the off, to be honest with you, but 21 I do remember struggling and I was very concerned for the MotoGP career mode. I think, I think we actually had a absolute disaster to start the actual career mode off in Qatar. So it's not indicative of how it's going to be towards the end of the season, but for the time being, we've got a lot of work to do in Superbike 22, and I'm all for it, because I'm very much enjoying my time here in this fantastic Superbike game. So now in the left-hand side, we're going for the Fogarty S's again. I've just caught a glance at the bottom right corner of the screen there. We're going to have to drop down to power setting two, aren't we? One lap of fuel behind we are, but I can't even beat them with power setting 3 now, so dropping down to power setting 2 is going to be a big, big burden on us. And this is where it's going to get really tough, and I cannot seem to get the braking right into the final corner. The front brake goes extremely hot, we go wide into the, into the final corner, and now we're trying everything we can in our power to regain that fourth position. So Scott Redding does take the position away from us, but we're going to fight back immediately into Redgate, classic Tom Sykes style. I must remember that I changed the uh, the riding style as well, actually. Moved it over to a more balanced look. So what Jonathan Ray uses rather than the shoulders out that I was using for my career mode. But it's good to see that Tom Sykes is back in Superbike 22 in, a, in some sort of method of madness. So on lap 7 of 9 now, with only a couple more laps to go, I still feel confident in our abilities around this particular section of track. Now going into Melbourne and then into Goddard's, I lose a lot of confidence. I just can't seem to get it right into the final sector and I don't know what it is. Probably the brakes, going gentle on the brakes is something that I really like to do and I find that more often than not in this one it requires a more heavier braking style. So I guess that's why I do find it difficult because my gentle, gentle nature doesn't quite get the bike stopped in time. But there is Scott Redding, I can see the muck off on the top of his helmet, he's definitely charging at us now, he wants to get on through but Power Stunning 3 has been enabled once again, somewhat deep for Melbourne Hairpin, 
did feel like I left a little bit of a gap there, but Scott Redding certainly wanted to get on through. Scott Redding moves on through, and I'm trying to fight him back. Goodness me, don't push him off the track, though, Tommy, as it's going to get a bit score. It's going to be a bit squirrely on the brakes there as Axel Bassani takes over the fourth position, and now we've got to chase him down, just like we were doing with Scott Redding a moment ago. Bit of contact, gesticulation from both riders. It's all going heck to a handbasket here in Donington as we now go to Redgate once again. Look at the front brake disc. What's the matter with it? Why is it just going extremely hot. Can't seem to do anything at this point in the, uh, the Grand Prix, but oh, to the left-hand side, I wanted to turn in just a tiny bit too early there, but if we did, that could have meant disaster, because that rumble strip there is not to be messed with in any shape, way, or form. It's a bloody lethal rumble strip into turn four, so keep well away, but we go into McLean's. Mistakes have been made. Scott Redding gets the best of us. We're down to seventh position, but I'm still fighting back. Alex Lowe's gets pushed wide. Scott Redding gets shoved and completely off the circuit there. He will be miffed. He will be absolutely livid. Goodness me. I think Shell enjoyed that. If he's watching today, then enjoy that particular moment, because you wanted to see that in the live stream. Got completely go. Oh, my goodness. When the brakes go like that and you get caught in the rumble strip, I oh, forget it. Two track limit warnings there instantly. I felt like I gave enough of a space there without actually yielding extra position. So, yeah, that was a little bit unfair. But fine, two track limit warnings not going to deter us from finishing in the top six. But what a disappointment. We have gone backwards. But it's not from lack of trying, let me tell you that much. Is uh, Garrett Gerloff pushing me wide? Oh, look at them. Look at them swarming on us. We're down to ninth position now. Oh, this is not going well. Firm on the brakes, we'll go into turn one as this disaster of a race will continue to go worse if we're not careful. As Locatelli is behind us and Michael Vandermark. I thought Michael Vandermark got through. Actually, he's in the 11th spot, so it must have been... Was it Loris Baz? Might have been one of them on the uh, Bonovo action bikes. I think it was. I think I can just see him in the distance there. There's a Locatelli front wheel. I'm in power setting two because I've got nothing left here. The fuel is... It's almost back into the green. It's just not quite there yet, though. But we're going to try it going into McLean's now and keeping the line. Not bad. We do have a bit more fuel to burn, but at this stage, we need to stay in two. We've got to stay in two until we get probably into Goddard's, into that final corner. If we do it any earlier than that, I think... Yeah, forget it. So another 127 in that last lap. I don't know what lap time it's going to be this time around. Could be even slower because power sending two is certainly not helping us at this stage of the Grand Prix but bringing on the power and getting down into Melbourne is uh, pretty critical for a defence here in our, oh look Andrea Locatelli he's fancy and Michael Vandermark's there as well I'm just I've lost all confidence on the brakes I just can't get the bike stop <laughs> Michael Vandermark massive wheelie there for the Dutchman but we'll go into Goddard's now for the final time of the video Vandermark's pushing us wide I'm hoping we don't lose another spot I want to finish at least in the top 10 well, I guess we'll finish in it regardless, but Power Setting 3 helps us finish in ninth place. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video. Sorry it wasn't the result that we wanted, but I do hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below. If you really enjoyed it, be sure to hit the subscribe button and consider liking it, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.